What is going on, beautiful people? Welcome back. It's your boy Blue. This is a first look at Train Sim World 2 Rush Hour. This time, we're taking the controls of the MBTA F40PH from Boston to Stoughton with this very interesting purplish pink livery. But, anyways, all aboard, passengers are waiting. Yo, I'm digging that outfit, bro. Like, I like the silk shirt. Like, he's looking fly right now. That's a businessman. He is going. He is going places. <laughs> I'm loving a new outfit. The blue shoes. The black dress. Okay, I see you guys coming through. What am I wearing? I'm invisible. All right, anyways, guys, we're, waiting, we're looking for our train uh, here at Boston uh, Terminal. Uh, we should be on track six. Our train actually doesn't leave for another five minutes or so. So we have a bit of time to kind of explore and uh, see what's going on in here. But I, I do like the station. Looks like a pretty good representation of, of what the real thing should look like. Um, to kind of show you guys what we got going on today, though, we are going to be driving from, like I said, Boston. Uh, should be most likely all stops through here all the way to Stoughton. I think that's how you pronounce it. And um, it's going to be pretty nice. It's going to be a very nice drive. We'll be driving in that baby right there. Yes, sir. We see, look how busy it is right now. We got one. We got track on. We got a we got track one, three, two, three, four, five, six trains from what I can see right now all at the station waiting to depart and there's probably even more on their way in. Uh, matter of fact, I do see another train leaving. So at one point there were seven trains here, which is crazy. So again, track six is for us. We'll go ahead and move up here and, and get the train ready to go. Uh, actually, you know, before we do that, let's do a quick... Uh, cab tour. So there's our next stop 1534. It's like it's one of the parts. So if you open this door, you see this is where the cab car is. So when you're driving uh, the opposite direction from Providence back down here to Boston, you'll be driving from this end. I personally not a big fan of the cab car on any train. I, I don't really like them, to be honest with you. So we're going to shut that door and move up here. We'll take a look at the inside uh, at the back before we move up front. And see, there's nobody on board right now because, again, it's well before it's time for us to depart. So we'll open this door up, make sure the cleaning crew got everything taken care of for us. But, uh, yeah, a lot less comfortable looking than the Amtrak train, but it should be because this is more of a, a short hop kind of thing. You know, you, you're just commuting here and to, from here to there, from uh, to work and back. Does this click on? I can't click on that. Um, so I'm not expecting it to be very... It's more like a subway, you know? Like, subways are not comfortable, like, ever, never. There's no first class, there's no business class, so. But again, uh, you know, it's a representation of what it is. It is what it is. I'm pretty sure it's probably not the most comfortable train to ride on in real life either. And the people who are on it probably would rather have their own car. I don't know. Uh, anything else we can click on in here? There's a handbrake here. Oh, that's cool. Look at that, how it cranks. Can I up unapply it? That is very cool. All right, here we are in the F40PH. That's our baby today. We drive in this purple dragon. <laughs> I don't know why I call it that, but sure. I like that name. It's going to stick for me. The purple dragon. I can dig it. We got our first aid kits, our fuses and torpedoes. Why does a train have a torpedo? What does that even mean? Uh, so, if we were doing Code in the Dark, uh, we would want to go into the fuse cabinet here and, and turn the main battery on. Uh, we're going to want to turn on the radio, turn on the alerter control. Now, we're not going to worry about safety systems today for the sake of today's video, but they do work. I've tried them, and uh, I've, you know, they've, they're not my friend just yet. I'll go over here and turn on the, uh, what is it, the front number lights. Those are always nice to have. And we'll go over here, and we'll turn on the AC power. And make sure that the HEP is actually on. It probably is on. Most likely it's on. And then this right here, the train line setup, will be on Long Hood Trail. So the HEP and the main battery are usually on by default in most of the scenarios. Uh, in most cases, you won't actually get a chance to actually turn it on. Here's our parking brake here, which is clickable. Uh, you can, uh, there is a scenario, or there's a, a tutorial where it allows you to do an actual manual engine start. I would like to do that more often, like in actual scenarios and, uh, you know, in some of the timetables, but, you know, it is what it is. So let's go ahead and hop into the seat and we'll get ready to go. All right, the doors should already be open. I'm just going to make sure that they are all open. 
Uh, again, this service start, doesn't leave for another two minutes, so we have plenty of time to get this thing prepared. So cut off valve is going to be set to in the MU2 valve. We set to lead or dead. We'll put the reverser in. Turn on the generator, engine run, and generator, and control and fuel pumps switches are on. Uh, headlights. I'm actually going to leave those off for right now because we're not just about to leave yet. We'll get the gauge lights on, and I believe the lights do work. There they are. We also have the sun visor that does work. And where is the white? I don't know where the wiper switch is, but there are wipers. Is this it? I don't know. I don't know where wipers. I'll figure it out. I know there's a, a key mapping for it. All right, it is time for our scheduled departure. We're going to lock the left side doors. We'll turn on the. Uh, oh, hold on a second. We'll, we'll uh, yeah, there you go. We'll turn on the headlights to bright. Give her a bell. Release our brakes. Wait for those to fully release. So the Amtrak is heading out now too. I think he's actually doing the uh, the turnaround, which is pretty cool. So throttle four, and we should start moving here any second. Another notch. Hit at the uh, independent brake. Make sure it bails off. Checking everything, make sure we're good. We're still not moving, even though the throttle is spooling up. Oh, reverser's not in forward. Of course it's not. All right, so there's a the reverser. Now we give it throttle when he's rolled out. <laughs> I knew I was forgetting something. Alright, because of this Amtrak train, we actually do have a red signal up ahead, so I want to watch out for that in about 400 yards. We're actually supposed to be right on the parallel with him, um, just, to make, just to be careful. Very cool. See, this is what Rush Hour is all about, seriously, like having activity, you know, all sorts of things happening. Again, that train right there is actually about to make uh, the big loop, the, the slow foul, five miles an hour backwards loop uh, that will allow them to pull back into the station and, and then go back uh, southbound again. I've actually done it and it's uh, it's very slow. It's very very slow. So basically what he's gonna do is he's gonna push that train backwards through this whole loop again five miles per hour and then back around and back into the station to pick up the passengers again. And uh, Or he might go into the depot where he'll go around and go back over here where all these trains are sitting. So. Um, there's multiple things. It depends on what they're doing. But pretty cool to see that happening. You can see there's also another MBTA train behind us uh, waiting for us to pull out of the station so we can pull in. So, again, back at the station, there was a good, like, seven or eight trains uh, just sitting there waiting for departure. And a lot of them are departing, you know, pretty close together. The departure times are pretty close together. So it's pretty cool. And it's one of the things I'm loving so far about Rush Hour is... Uh, the busyness aspect of it, you know, like I feel like a passenger route is not a passenger route if you're if you don't have some sort of uh, Busyness, you know, and there's some long-range regional uh, Trains, you know where they'll stop at a station. There'll be nobody there and that is realistic Yeah, but when you're at a, a terminal like this or a hub like this There's gonna be lots of inbound and outbound trains going. Let's go ahead and release that brake I think I shouldn't hit the brakes too easily <laughs> right there so speed limit right here is still pretty slow. I think it's around 10 miles per hour. As you can see, that red light did go away once that uh, Amtrak train cleared. Now we have a yellow. Uh, next stop is Boston Back Bay. It's in less than a mile. It's a very short hop right here. A uh, short stint from Boston, Boston Back Bay. That'll be our first stop. And I believe we will get a chance to go much faster than this, so don't worry. Do not worry. It's not that kind of... Not that kind of route. You won't be going five miles an hour for the whole thing. I actually, one of the things I like about this route is even with this train, which is like the local commuter train, uh, you still get to go pretty high speeds. You can drive this train from Boston, which we just left, up to Providence. I should say down to Providence, uh, which is the same route that the uh, Amtrak train takes, except you'll probably have more stops along the way. So it'll probably take you a bit longer to get there. It takes about 40, 45 minutes uh, in the Amtrak train to get from Boston to Providence, uh, including the two stops in between. Uh, so not too bad, and you get to go about 125 miles an hour in that train. And this train, I'm not really sure exactly what speed uh, you'll get up to uh, when going up to Providence, but you do have more stops, so you probably don't get to go as fast. 
is also a really cool scenario uh, that I almost thought about doing a video for. I don't think I will though. Um, it starts early in the morning. I think it's like a seven o'clock service. And basically what you have to do is uh, you get in this train, you start it up, uh, not completely cold and dark, but you do have to start up some of the uh, systems. And then you actually create your own uh, formation. You know, like you have to actually go back and do some switching, kind of like if it was a freight job. Right, let's get some, some, uh, some braking in here. And you actually have to create a, a make a formation of trains, or not trains, but of coach cars, uh, and then drive it up to Providence, pick up passengers, and then drive it, I think, back down here uh, to Boston. So it's pretty cool. It's actually a really cool scenario. Um, it's a bit long. It's about an hour long, I think, in total, if you do everything perfect. So anyways, we're pulling up to our first station here, Boston Back Bay, using the automatic braking here. Very simple braking system. Uh, very easy to, to, to work with and understand. You just kind of hold the brakes and the brakes do their thing so we'll stop a little bit short but I'll take it and there we go open up the doors on the right side all right doors are locked on the right side we are ready to depart releasing the automatic brake and giving her power we'll go to throttle four it takes a bit of power even though we you know we're not pulling like freight cars or anything like that it still feels like it takes quite a bit of power to get this thing initially rolling. So I, I tend to start off in throttle four and it will push to five. Speed limit up here is about 30 miles per hour, I think. So we'll get to go a bit faster here in just a second. Next stop, Ruggles, just a little bit over a mile away. You can see all the passengers are just getting here. I wonder if they're here for me or if they're here for the next train because they were definitely not here in time to catch this train, <laughs> that's for sure. So rolling into the tunnel, which is the reason why I want to have the gauge lights. And I believe uh, you can actually use a camera in the tunnel now. Oh, that is correct. Much needed feature we've needed for a very long time and perfect time to do our tunnel test. You know, I don't know if it passed the tunnel test yet. We'll have to see what it sounds like when we get out of the tunnel. The whole point of the tunnel test is to see if it actually, uh, uh, if it changes the way the horn sounds based on its environment, rather than it just being a generic sound. Now again, don't get me wrong, I think the horn sounds amazing on this train. I think it sounds amazing on this train, uh, but I just want to know if they actually made any adjustments to how it sounds in a tunnel. So that's, that's what the whole point of my tunnel test is. So coming up to the next station, it's not very far out. Once we get out of the tunnel though, I will honk the horn again to see what that sounds like out here. Uh, we also have to prepare to stop too though. So I don't want to overshoot this, this one. All right, back to throttle idle. Let's give it all the brakes we can get. And real quick to test to the uh, horn. I think it sounds the same. I don't know, I'd have to probably hear it back to back, but I think it sounds pretty close to the same. So it may, even though the horn sounds amazing, it may have failed. The tunnel test again this is not the release version of this uh, route and DLC so there's you know some things could change but you know I don't think that's gonna be something they're gonna be editing it doesn't sound bad but um, all right so we're pulling up to the station we're looking good on speed uh, I kind of think I got in the brakes a little early can we go to Ruggles track one give us some more brake and get stopped here look at him going up to ah uh, <laughs> I love the way he was stomping up those stairs. And we'll be a little short here at Ruggles, but I'll take it. Much better than overshooting it. All right, departing Ruggles Station. Next stop is Heidi Park. And we need to be there in about six minutes, about six miles away. So let's go ahead and hammer down on that throttle. Speed limit is basically unrestricted at this point. <laughs> 120 miles per hour, which we're definitely not gonna be able to do in this train. Uh, but I'm gonna try my best. So pushing forward, 
Again, I think they did a good job on the sound set of this particular train. I think the other one sounds good too on this route. I think the sounds in, as a whole on this route sound pretty good. And I'm hoping that, it, that they kind of set this as a standard for routes to come uh, as far as sounds. I mean, obviously sounds can always be better. There's always something that's, that's missing. There's always something that was overlooked or something that just wasn't tuned as well. But I feel that, uh, you know, sounds just really adds to that, um, that immersion of the game, you know? So uh, they've really been lacking, I feel like, on a lot of the, the recent routes. There's our alerter. Um, and with this one, I feel like they definitely stepped it back up to where maybe they left off a while ago, you know? Because there's been some routes they've, they've made that sound great. I mean, Peninsula Corridor, in my opinion, it sounds really good. It could be better, but I think it sounds really good. Um, there's a lot of other routes as well that do sound pretty good, but there's also some routes that sound pretty bad. <laughs> uh, so I understand with all the, you know, pandemics and stuff that, you know, it's much harder to get your hands on sounds and go out and, and do stuff in person, but I'm hoping that they'll, you know, just kind of, you know, partner up with the community, partner up with people uh, to make their products even better. So I feel like that's one thing that's, that's been missing in the community, and I, and I think they know that, and they're trying to, hopefully, they're trying to find ways to, to improve uh, the way they collaborate with the community and, and allowing them to help them make the products better. Is our alerter again. But, um, but yeah, I think that I'm hoping that this route will be the standard. So I'm hoping all the other rush hour routes that are coming out, uh, which I am looking forward to, uh, even though the rest of them are not American, <laughs> I'm still looking forward to them. I'm a train person. Like, I do love trains. I, lo I love simulators as well, but I, I, love, I love trains. And so it doesn't really matter too much about what type of train it is, what country it's in. Obviously, you know, I, I'm a little bit keen to the American trains because I'm, I'm, an, Amer I'm an American person. I, I live out here, so um, that's what I want. There's a train coming up, speaking of trains. Um, but I, I definitely enjoy me some, uh, some train. Oh, okay, we're switching tracks. <laughs> no wonder that thing told me to slow down. I probably should have paid attention. It's too late now. I'm sorry, people in the back. Oh, that was very uncomfortable. Very uncomfortable. All right, we're skipping over this platform. Won't be stopping here. There's nobody out there either. I don't even know how you would get in there. Is there a stair? How would you get in these? There's gotta be some stairs. There's a stairs. Okay, I'm like, how would you even get into that platform? It's just an island. All right, speed limit's moving back up. <laughs> I missed out on that speed limit. Whoops. Some more graffiti on the left. Pretty cool. So still kind of, you know, driving through the suburb area, I guess, uh, driving south now of Boston. And our speed limit is 77 right around here on this track so I think the I guess these tracks over here I guess probably like the express ones maybe I, don't know, I could be wrong but I think that if you're on this track like the center one you the speed limit is like 125 there but here on the right side it's down to 70 or 80 which is it's fine I think that speed limit is still pretty good so again this this route one thing I like about this route is that it's not very slow in my opinion even though this local commuter service we're running right now even though it has you know quite a lot more stops in the Amtrak service, uh, you still get to go pretty fast. You're not just creeping along at, you know, 10 miles an hour, five miles an hour the whole time, which uh, for me, I don't really enjoy going that slow. If I'm doing freight, it depends on the gameplay. There's another train passing by right there. So, all right, we're 1.8 out. We are almost there. Let's take a quick look outside. I think it looks pretty good. You can actually see there's a little bit of dirt there on the front, which is always much needed. I feel like the, the Amtrak ACS-64 is a bit too clean in my personal opinion. You can even see a few, uh, you know, a few a few hints of, of wear and tear here on the interior. It's not like super obvious. I mean, for me personally, I would love to see a lot more wear and tear on every single one of these trains. A bit more character as always. What I always say, it adds a bunch more character. So, all right, coming up, we're less than a mile away. I don't know if we're going to make it, so we're just going to throw in the... Oh, nope, not a handle off. We're going to throw in the brakes now and see how she does. So I'm not sure how she's going to handle trying to stop from this speed. I think we're still going to be short, so let's go ahead and release those brakes. Or actually, let's go 50%. I don't know if this train has a dynamic brake. I don't think it does. I think it only has an independent automatic. Yeah, I don't know if we're going to make it. We're 55 miles an hour, 500 yards. We're about to find out. 
full brakes, fully applied as we come in. Here comes the platform. I think we, I don't know, we'll need some help from the independents. Full application, oh, I don't know. I don't think so, there's no way. There's no way. Yeah, we're not gonna make that, we're gonna slide right past it. All right, so what was that? We stopped at like, was it a mile? <laughs> Oh, we might still get, uh, you know, that'll do, that'll do, I'll take that, let's go ahead and unlock those right side door, <laughs> I'll take that, that was not as bad as I thought, just don't use that front door, please, you might get hurt. Alright, let's lock those right side doors here at Hyde Park, or Hyde E Park, whichever, however you say it. And we'll release all these brakes because we use every single bit of them. And there's a wiper. Okay, I, I gotta find how to turn it off. So I don't know how to turn it off. Alright, let's go. Alright, we can do better than that. Alright, next stop, Route 128. Which sounds like a route, but it's actually a place, apparently. So, yeah, there you go. Alright, next stop, we're going to be approaching Route 128, and still trying to figure out this whole braking curve uh, to find out when we should brake and whatnot. So right now we're at 70 miles per hour, speed limit is 120, we're 1.2 miles away, now 1.1, and now 1.0, there it is. So I'm going to go back to the throttle to idle, and we're pretty fast this time around, I think we may have to switch tracks too, so... They start braking. I'm gonna do 50%. And now you'll notice it takes actually a second for it to actually really kick in. First, the brake cylinder seems to kind of give it a little bit of reduction. And then you'll see the amps going up for the engine braking as well. And at that point, I'm gonna start adding in some more, some more brakes. Go 71%. We're at 50 miles per hour and approaching. Doing a, uh, I feel a bit more confident about this one. I feel a bit more confident about this one. Here we go. 37 miles per hour. Let's get it. that brakes back in. Let's go. Fully applied. And I'm pretty confident we're going to make it this time. See the passengers there on the side, on both sides actually, getting ready for both of these trains. Wow, that is a lot of passengers. The school bus over there. And there it is. I think we made it. We have mastered the brakes. <laughs> uh, let me not say that and jinx myself. Alright, departing Route 128, next stop's gonna be Canton Junction. And I'm, I'm very proud of myself with how that stop went. Look at that. Is that a house or some type of residential building? Maybe a nursing home? We got some more freight cars on our right side there. And uh, again, I really, really like seeing that there. It's, if, if it wasn't there, it'd just be an empty track. And I mean, maybe we wouldn't miss it, miss it but I feel like now that it's there, it has to be there. So there's been some other routes in the past where uh, maybe in, it wasn't really a freight route, it was more of a passenger route, but uh, they chose not to incorporate the uh, any any type of freight traffic at all, even static. And it just kind of feels empty, you know, it feels empty, it feels a little, uh, yeah, I don't know. That's, that's my personal opinion. But uh, we got clear green lights ahead of us so far. Uh, we do, it does say we're actually approaching a yellow up in about a mile so we'll watch out for that there's the alerter so we'll acknowledge that with the Q key but doing pretty good doing pretty good all right Canton Junction is coming up this is one of uh, one of my favorite stations coming up actually so hopefully we don't miss it we're going 72 miles per hour 1.3 miles out 
still trying to really figure out the brakes. Uh, had a better stop last time around, but at the same time, I don't want to get too cocky. So right about around in a mile or so, I'm going to completely release the throttle to idle. So there we go. Throttle's going to go to idle. Let the amps die down so that whenever we brake, we'll get the amps for that. And there's 0 0.8, 0 0.7, going into 50% automatic braking now. Still have the yellow signals ahead, 45 mile per hour zone as well. So we're actually going to brake a little bit more aggressively uh, for that speed restriction at 45 miles per hour. Coming up very soon. Red signal next up. That's going to be after our stop though. And we should actually make it here right in time. And yeah, that's the reason we got that 45 miles per hour because we're making a switch over here. Because uh, if you go forward, if you go straight forward, that'll take you to Providence. And to the left, it'll take you to Stoughton. So we're going to Stoughton here. And again, look at this. Pretty cool station. It goes both two ways. See lots of people already on the on the side getting ready to board. Speed limit also drops on this side too. I wanna I wanna stop too short. So we're gonna release the brake and give it a little bit of throttle. And we are good on time. Much better. I think I'm finally getting the hang of the brakes. It's one of the hardest things when jumping from train to train is figuring out all the different ways the brakes work. And there we go, right at the edge of the platform on the marker. I think it's my best stop yet. I'll take it. Unlock the right side. Yes, please. So as you can see, this station actually has a really cool overlook area here. Um, bit of a walkway right over top of the track. Look at all those people. Oh my gosh. <laughs> it just got real busy. There must be another train on the way because you guys are definitely not making it to my train unless you just got off of my train. But anyway, it's what, I think this is why this is my favorite station because it's, it's not like huge, but it's just cool. It's just, I don't know. I think it's something really cool about the station. It has an overlook area where you can, uh, you know, look at... The trains that they pass by, all that kind of stuff. It's just a perfect station in my opinion. Alright, let's go ahead and lock the doors and we All right, speed limit is gonna hold us here uh, around 30 it looks like miles per hour. Uh, Canton Center is our next stop. We only have two more stops left. I believe it's this one and then the final stop. Uh, still have a yellow signal up ahead of us. And we're going really slow, so we can still give it some more throttle. We're 500 yards away. That's five football fields. We're going to this yellow signal. I want to approach it nice and slow. Now, it looks like it comes down to a single track back here. Now, I personally really like this part of the route. And I'm going to tell you more about that once after we stop. Let's go ahead and give it some brakes. Let's see, decent amount of people at this uh, station or this platform for such a small, such a small little station here. And we actually have a, a railroad crossing up ahead. And that's the first railroad crossing we've seen since we have left Boston. You don't see very many railroad crossings on the Amtrak route to Providence. Let's go ahead and open up the right side doors. All right, doors are locking. I'm releasing the brakes once again, and I want to see if these uh, crosswalks actually, if these railroad crossings actually activate here, since we were stopped at the station. Very interesting that that crosswalk did not work uh, back there after Canton Center. It should have, it should have came down for us. So again, this is a development build, so it, that may be fixed. We'll have to see. <laughs> um, but hopefully they'll they'll see that and make that fix because that that should have definitely come down. So next and last final stop here on this route is Stoughton. 
So three miles away, speed limit just looks like it's gonna jump up to, what's that? 30, 40, 40 or so? And the cool thing I was gonna say, one thing I love about this side of of the route, again, this if I go to the map, you'll see we're now on this, I guess the Stoughton branch. So if you didn't turn here, you can continue uh, to the long portion down to Providence. A lot of fun, I love this part too, very fast uh, with the Amtrak. But I like this portion of it. Uh, it just looks so much different than the rest of this route over here. Like it's, it's like trees on either side. You got a few bridges. It kind of feels a bit residential. You got some houses on either side. Like look at that. That's a cool little bridge. <laughs> yeah, houses on either side. Uh, we're gonna encounter a few railroad crossings again. The other uh, Providence portion. Uh, doesn't actually go through any railroad crossings. Most of the train, uh, the trains kind of avoid crossing any roads, so you don't need any railroad crossings. Is our alerter? But I like this one. It's a single track, uh, one way in. I believe there's only one way out, and it kind of feels, you know, kind of back homey. You know, <laughs> this feels very different than the rest of the route. Alright, that one's working. Yeah, that one's working, so I don't know. I guess it's just that one railroad crossing, so... Don't just see that first one and think, Oh, the railroad crossings don't work on the whole route. Well, it's just that one. I've seen many of the railroad crossings work, so... I think we may see a couple more on the way, so we'll have to see. Alright, we're actually climbing uphill now. Look at that, 1% gradient. There's actually a few little industrial areas over here as well. You can see as that track breaks off, track breaks off to the left. You can see a few more freight cars, which is very nice to have. Again, just kind of filling in that space. So we're one mile out from Stoughton. Our final stop here's another crosswalk. And the more I, um, you know, get used to this route. I actually got to learn where those uh, railroad crossings are so I can actually do the horn at the correct time because I don't I didn't actually see any signage uh, that says whether or not you know says for the the train to whistle unless it's like a quiet zone or something like that but I really don't know here's another one coming up great way to end our route man loving it, having to get some time to use the horn the horn just sounds so amazing. It just, you know, it would suck if we didn't get a chance to use it on any crosswalks or anything like that. So still actually climbing up the hill as a Stoughton. 1% gradient still. Again, we only have passenger cars. They're very light. Look at that trampoline back there in somebody's backyard. It's a, a tiny house in a huge backyard. And there's a swing set in their backyard. So a bunch of really tiny houses in huge backyards. You can tell this is like possibly like suburbs. Suburban area. Another crosswalk coming up. And our stop is right afterwards. So we go throttle to idle. Oh my god, that bus and that mail truck almost hit each other. Alright, I'll give us some brakes. Lots of brakes. We're actually already speeding. There's gonna be a few more crosswalks. We're gonna keep the horn coming. Here's our stop. Now, I don't know if you would honk the horn right here over the platform. I feel like that would just kill everybody's ears. All right, and there's our stop right there. Final stop of the day. You can see all the passengers lining up here in Stoughton, ready to go. I wonder if this track actually continues, and if it does, where does it go to? Like, where would this branch extend to? 
All right, and brakes are set right on the money. Ladies and gentlemen, we've made the stolen. Let's go ahead and unload the passengers. We'll make sure the brakes are set. Fully applied. Toronto is idle. Reverse to neutral. And unlock the left. There we go. And I am going to turn off the headlights. This is our last stop. All right, that's a wrap. The next service is scheduled for 1628. So we'll go ahead and leave this here. I'm gonna take the reverse route so nobody drives off with this thing. And we'll just kind of put all the brakes on applied and uh, take a step out, take a quick break. That was nice. I really like that route. Interested in trying to do that back the other direction. But uh, thank you guys so much for joining me on this journey to Stoughton. Uh, hopefully you guys are enjoying the uh, train simulator content lately, guys. Uh, thank you to Dovetail for providing this to me as well. I've really been enjoying Train Sim World Rush Hour 2. And I'm uh, looking forward to seeing what you guys, how you guys feel about it. And looking forward to the next route. So until next time, guys, remember you got three choices. Give up, give in, or give it all you got. Peace, love, and God bless you. I'll see you guys next time in the next video. I am out.